Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Wednesday, July 25th, 26th, I'm sorry. And uh, Wednesday reminds me that Cash will be here for his uh, music lesson later this afternoon. And I'm hoping that we're going to get over that hump and we'll be able to get you a video of him playing and singing in the near future. Have you been watching Itchy Boots lately? Oh, my gosh. You, it's just unbelievable the problem she's gotten into there. <laughs> and I think it's... Uh, uh, Liberia, I think, is where she's at in Africa. Um, there are cars and trucks that have been stuck in knee-deep mud on their one of their main roads for over a month. They're just piled up and lined up, and they took her motorcycle through there. And, uh, yeah, it was a mess. Some guy was riding the motorcycle and burned her clutch up, and now she's stuck, and it's a mess. It's just a total mess. I mean, the very worst trail on the very worst day on my farm is far better than their regular roads in Liberia. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Speaking of itchy boots, uh, that being another YouTuber, I have another YouTuber you might be interested in watching. Um, his name is Curtis, and he's from Cutting Edge Engineering in Australia. And he works on the really big equipment. I mean the really big stuff. He just put a new uh, cutting edge on the, on the bucket of a giant uh, bulldozer. And just the cutting edge... Just the little strip of going across the front probably weighs more than the whole bucket and everything on the on my skid steer bobcat. And mine's a pretty good size one. Uh, just the cutting edge weighs more than the whole bucket. <laughs> so that'll give you some idea of the size of the equipment this guy's working on. I've been watching him for a couple of years. He's really good. And he's got an entertaining dog uh, that you might like. And he also occasionally feeds these uh, wild birds. I'm... I'm going to call them magpies. I don't really think they're magpies, but they kind of look like that. And uh, sometimes he can get them to eat right out of his hand. So anyway, it's kind of interesting to watch him. He's, uh, he's really doing the big jobs. So if you're inter interested in machining and, and jobs like that, well, he's the guy to watch. I do have a link in the description. I received these yesterday, ball bearings, and you might say, why in the world do you need ball bearings? Well, I didn't need near this many. In fact, I think I only need one of that size right there, but uh, they didn't come in singles, so I had to buy a whole pack, but the whole pack was less than $10, so uh, I'm, I do occasionally need ball bearings like this, so it's not bad to have them on hand. Um, the reason I needed the, the one was, uh, as you know, I had made a uh, bandsaw sharpener for my sawmill. And uh, when I took that uh, uh, sharpener, it's a chainsaw sharpener that I converted into a, excuse me, a bandsaw mill sharpener, bandsaw blade sharpener for the mill. Anyway, uh, I lost one of the little ball bearings out of it. Not a big deal. I can just put it right back in. And that way it'll still function as a chainsaw sharpener as well. Uh, I was at Harbor Freight yesterday, and I bought a lot of stuff at Harbor Freight, but the thing I thought I'd show you that has an impact on you is this right here, or it may have an impact on you guys. It is a, um, it almost looks like it turns on when I turn it up like that. <laughs> anyway, it's an LED light that I can hang from uh, the ceiling over on the dark side. There's an area over there when I'm trying to film and everything, it's just so dark. So I thought, well, that's a cheap, easy way to uh, fix that problem. So I did that. And uh, I bought a lot more stuff over there at Harbor Freight too, but I won't bore you with all those details. Um, I, uh, as you know, been working on the horse trailer. Uh, Alex recommended this paint here. Now this paint apparently is just kind of a generic paint sold at most of the auto parts stores, Duplicolor. But Alex used it on his uh, motorhome that he rebuilt and restored. And he really liked this paint. He said it really worked well and it went on easy and you don't have to thin it, etc. It's just really good stuff, he said. So I bought this for the horse trailer. If you've had experience with it and you feel otherwise, let me know. But um, I don't know a thing about it. I just took his word for it and bought a couple of quarts of it. It's in. I bought the gloss white 
So that means we're really getting close to finishing up the horse trailer, I think. So um, let's see. Uh, I also priced the culvert pipe yesterday while I was uh, out and about. And um, I found a good deal on the, on the dual wall culvert pipe for the pond up there uh, where I can change the uh, drain. I'm going to get started on that soon. If, if not today, probably by the end of the week for sure, I'll be started on the pond project. So we're finally off a, off a dead zero there and we'll get moving forward. I have a guest in my studio right now. Step up here, my guest. This is Trinian. He's my second youngest grandson. And Trinian and I have our work cut out for us this morning because we have a major project. <laughs> a major because I don't have a clue how to do this. <laughs> what is the project, Trinian? We have an airplane, a toy what, airplane. What kind of airplane? Uh, a Her purple one. <laughs> A remote control airplane. He's colorblind too, by the way. I don't know if it's purple or blue. If I had guessed, I would have said blue, but he said purple. So we're probably both wrong. <laughs> Trinian is the one that inherited my weird taste. Uh, a lot of people think I can't taste. The truth is that we both can taste too well. We have way more taste buds than your average human being. <laughs> um, we have a taste buds in the neighborhood of, I think, I don't remember the numbers now, but I'm going to say something like 12,000 taste buds or something compared to the average person with just a few thousand. Anyway, we have many, many more times taste buds. So we taste things weirdly. That's why we can't eat vegetables because we taste the chlorophyll in the vegetables where you guys generally can't taste chlorophyll. If you could, you wouldn't eat it. He's also inherited my color blindness and probably my night blindness. I haven't we haven't checked on the night blindness, but I'm so night blind. I've walked past my white car in the dark and walked all the way out into my field many times. I do have a motion light out there now, so that doesn't happen anymore. But anyway, just those are just some side notes about Trinian so that uh, you kind of know that Trini and I have a little more connection than the rest of the grandkids. <laughs> Unfortunately, on the taste thing, I wish he wouldn't have got that. That's a bad deal. But he eats just like I do. He pretty much just meat and potatoes only. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's got his uh, plane here. Tell him the story on your plane. What happened to it the first time? My dad was trying to fly it, and he had no clue. <laughs> and he turned it on the experience mode, and uh, then he just kind of <laughs> <laughs> crashed it. Yeah. And what happened? The propeller snapped in half, and then he tried it again, and he snapped another one, and then there was one left. So he snapped all of his propellers off, is what he's saying. Uh, his dad uh, flew it, uh, you know, was trying to get out there and show Trinian how to fly it, but Trinian wasn't even there yet, so his dad was trying to learn how to fly the thing and ended up tearing it all up before Trinian even got to try it out. So we've got new ones. So we've got new propellers now, and uh, Grandma, I, I don't know if Grandma took care of that or who, but anyway, we've got new propellers. And we have a remote control, and uh, I can fly my drone okay. I don't think I can fly this okay, because it's a little different than flying a drone. Those drones are almost fly themselves, you know, pretty much. They've got collision avoidance and all kinds of things in the drones, where these things are... Uh, Pretty much you push this thing and it goes somewhere. <laughs> and it, and it doesn't always go where you want it to. So uh, are you excited about that? You wanting to try it out? Well, we're going to try it out this morning before it gets too hot. Unfortunately, it's already windy according to Grandma out there. So let's, we'll see what we can do. If it's too windy, obviously we're not going to be able to fly it. Uh, let me look. I see a few little question marks popping up down there. Um, uh, Christia Thomason was the first again. So, Christia, you're uh, you're on top of things. Um, D E says, uh, Jerry, have you finished repairing that last mandolin? You know, that's a good point. I have not. 
yeah, I, it just gets lost in the scheme of things. Now, I just out of my own self-defense, I told the guy it was going to be fall before I got to it anyway. That was before I decided to retire. But so he's not expecting it immediately anyway. So, but you're, but I'm glad you brought that up because I kind of forgot about it and I do need to get on that. So thanks for reminding me. Uh, Christia Thomason says, uh, will we see videos from the Pond Project, please? Yes, we will definitely see videos from the Pond Project. In fact, like I said, I'll probably be starting that before the end of the week, and uh, I will video all that stuff. Um, you can't really tell from the pictures I've shown so far, but whoever built that pond, I mean, they did a good job in one way, and in another way, you know, just kind of goofy. Um, you know, water will always seek a level like this. I mean, there, it's just going to happen. I don't care. You pour water in anything, and it's going to go like that. It's going to get flat. <laughs> That's just the way water works. Well, whoever built that pond, uh, you know, kind of had that in mind for a little ways, and then they went up like this, and it made this huge uh, high bank on the on the on the creek side on the side where i'm going to vent uh you know run the new drain anyway it really was really really high much higher than it is presently i took all of, why they did that i don't know because the water ain't gonna lay like this it's just not gonna do that and i mean like it was like a racetrack almost around there it was that high and uh, anyway, uh, I dug all that dirt off of there a long time ago, right after I bought the place. And I moved all that where I put my big, huge, um, that big metal steel building, that 42 by 72 building that I built. And I used that. That's how much dirt was there to level out the ground. I mean, <laughs> and it was, it was enough dirt to level that whole area. Um, so I have no idea what they were thinking. Well, in addition to that, they made the dam much, much worse thicker than it needs to be on that end of the pond also so that's going to be part of the pond project is i'm going to bowl it out a little bit i'm not going to go crazy i'm just a couple of feet but i'm going to bowl it out a couple of feet and what that'll do is narrow the the width of the dam down because right now it's a little over 20 feet it's about 22 feet or maybe a little more well the culvert pipe comes in 20 foot lengths and i don't want to buy two lengths just to add a couple of feet on so it's a perfect time to make the pond a little bigger by just going on the inside there and and opening it up uh, and then that'll shorten the distance I have to run the culvert pipe on top of it. And in addition, I'm going to raise the pond level about six inches or so when I put the culvert pipe in too. So anyway, that was a really long explanation there, Christia. But yeah, you're going to get to see all that. And uh, it's going to be quite a project. This, this is not a five-minute job, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> Let's see, do we have any other questions this morning? All right, um, that looks like that's going to be it. And I know Trinian is anxious to get outside. We have uh, 55 viewers at the moment. Um, we will see you probably tomorrow. Oh, before I let you go, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, tomorrow evening, we are going to be live on uh, this channel here, 7 o'clock p.m. The band is going to be uh, live. Uh, we'll be performing probably two 45-minute sets. Uh, if you have requests, uh, if, you, if there's any particular favorite songs you have that you've heard us do, or uh, if there's a song that you even haven't heard us do, but you might want us to try, uh, if one of us knows it, we'll give it a try. Because we don't have the show planned out. We pretty much just do it as we think of songs. We throw them in there and do them. Um, there's, you know, we've been doing it that way for years and years, so we're kind of accustomed to that. But it doesn't necessarily mean we know every song, that's for sure. So you may make a request that we don't have a clue about. But if you'd like to make requests, put those in the uh, comments section of today's video. And uh, be sure, again, to put some question marks in front of them just so it'll draw my attention to them. And uh, if we can do those requests, we'll do them tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Be sure to tune in. Uh, this will be the first of what we're planning to do, a monthly uh, last Thursday of every month. We're planning to go live. 
and do a band project. But if, uh, you know, if it's not well attended, if it's not viewed, well, then there's really no incentive to keep it up. So we hope you'll help us out and tell your friends and try to get as many people watching as possible. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you.